All right, it's good. So on the horns, you want to find the center. So we cut the 22 gauge wire in half. I'm gonna find the center of it. I'm gonna put the center at the very back of the head on top and then pull each wire underneath and just really give it a squeeze to tighten it down on there. I didn't like twist them together or anything. It just, it just, they just pass each other underneath and then they come up. And so to make sure that stays put, we're gonna take a six inch piece of core wool and make a quarter of it. And we're gonna do a nice figure eight between those wires. This also builds up the back of the head more. So every time I, I'm just staying in the same direction, the same direction that I usually wrap, but every time I come around, I'm going through the horns in a different way. So I'll do one more time. And then the rest of it, um, I'm gonna come down here a little bit. I'm gonna pull some of this off. But now we really have that cone-shaped face and that's what you want. You notice I'm left-handed. I'm always working from the left. If you're right-handed, you're gonna be, you're definitely gonna be looking at the right side of your animal more. Okay, now we need to, we need to make a chest. Okay, two inches only to a chest. Okay, we still have two six inch pieces, or three actually, because I told you to quarter it, so I'm gonna do the same. And we're probably gonna end up using two of these, but we wanna wrap the square end of the Zoli tool um, about a two inch area. So again, this is a quarter of a six inch piece And whenever you wrap the Zuli tool, you want to be able to go out and back. So that was out, and now this one I'm going to take back. So I wrapped a two inch area out and back, and that's what my shape looks like. I'm going to slide that off. And then we want to make some nice big um, belly poofs. So we need a long piece. We need like a, we need like a, I'm thinking about 18 inches, what? 18 to 24 inches. And we're going to split that in half. They have a big belly. So you are working on the Mega. So if you see her using the length of her Stabit. Yeah, I'm working on the big Stabit. This is a 14, 12 by 14 incher. What do I say? I say Zuli tool on the round end belly poofs. Okay. So I'm on the round end. I've got this long piece. I'm not pulling super hard this time. And I'm kind of staying in one place with a little bit of a crisscross. So that's about where I want to be. So it's like a little longer and thinner than an egg. So I'll show you again. I'm kind of, I'm going a little bit this direction, maybe two wraps and then turning around, going this direction and then kind of just thinking of a crisscross as I finish it out. Careful not to hit your tool with the needles. You don't mm -hmm. want to nick it.
got a lot of notes here that I'm hoping become apparent as I wrap. Let's get the chest on. That's going to... You know what, too? If you have another piece, um, whether it's six inches, eight inches, whatever, just get another wrap on this, on this body. You can um, accentuate that hip bend in the spine because basically you're mimicking the um, pelt, the hip bones, and do a little crisscross there to get that going a little more. Okay, goats have a very square chest. So that first two inch pillow we made, we want to put one end of it at the base at the base of the neck and tack it down. I'm sorry if my head's in there, but mm, not see. mostly not. Okay. And then the other end is gonna come between the legs, the front legs, and you really want to square it. Uh oh. There Whoa. We go. I know. That would have been something. <laughs> Never seen that before. <laughs> Sarah's pencil will get stuck. So I'm thinking of a square here, like a right angle. So that's how I'm I'm shaping it as I stab. Then before we put the um, before we put the big belly poofs on, I feel like we need a little bit more rib cage here. So I there's a couple of options. We could wrap this, but let's just pull let's pull a four inch piece, split it in half, and then just fold pillow and the reason I'm folding it instead of putting it on the Zulu tool is because it'll be a little softer and I want one end of it to kind of blend in with the chest and the other end to come back to about mid body and that's just representing a little bit of more substance where the rib cage would be. How many goats do stomachs have Milo? I mean how many stomachs? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like four. I I don't know. Will you find out? I can find out. And part of their digestive process, like it keeps them warm, it gives them energy, like it's like this whole like way that they exist. Goats have one very large stomach split okay. into four compartments. Four compartments, okay. So now we want to put on our goat bellies, and it's a good idea to look at a picture of a goat. The other thing that's interesting is when you take make a shape on the Zuli tool and pull it off, it always seems like one end's more a little more fat and another end's a little more tapered. So if you look at your shape and can see that, you kind of want the fat end to go back and the tapered end to come forward. And their butt, their butts. Oh my gosh, what's the matter with me today? Their bellies have a cute little hang to them that we want to see their hip bone. So I really want this to hang down here. It's almost like it's like barely getting attached to the um, to the wrapped spine here. That's why we needed that rib cage piece to, to have something to stab the belly into. All right, see how like low that is compared to the spine. Okay, put your other side on so you're not <laughs> lopping sided. Look, I pushed the rib cage right over. It's going to feel a little kind of floaty in space until we get it wrap together. That's his little belly butt. So you gotta make sure his belly butt is centered. <laughs> it's 
Such a big belly. Okay, we need another really long piece. Another like 18 inch piece. Sorry. <laughs> Split it in half lengthwise. I think I have abandoned my notes. Yeah, you'll I'm refer to them I'm again. I'm rogue. I'm really stretching it out because I, I need it to be like long and smooth and thin. And then we want to wrap. No, you know what we want to do first? We want to put his little hip bones on. So you need. What did I make those out of? Take did you do that little pull six thing? inch piece. Oh, that would be a good idea. I like that idea. <laughs> Split it in half lengthwise. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know how to do this, Milo. <laughs> Let's see what I did. I'll tell you what I did. See in the notes. She's Soft back. Soft pillow on each side for hip butt definition. And one more thigh wrap. Okay. A soft pillow. All right. I took a six inch piece. I split it in half. I'm going to split that in half this way. So now I have a three inch piece and I'm going to fold about a one inch, think three quarters and it'll end up one inch. So that's your soft pillow. And what I want is I want this to give the goat that butt that Milo was looking for. And then I want it to come up and kind of blunt this, um, this edge a little bit and that's kind of like the hip the hip bone yeah you, you can't do that with the the pull piece no it's i mean there's there's always like more than one way to do something but well that accomplishes two things with one yeah. shape so again it was a little three inch piece it was a half of a piece of core wool three inches long and you fold about a three quarter inch pillow And the blunt, you know, the thicker side, you want to try and make a hip bone. And the thinner side, you want to taper around the thigh or the butt. Usually, when I'm making a bony shape, I, I do make it a little more firm. But I want to have the sculpt, sculptability of the soft pillow. Okay, and then their upper thigh isn't that huge. So now, to help this stay on, and just to make this look a little less, we got a lot of craziness going on here, spindly, we're going to split that other half of the six inch piece and just do a wrap. And this wrap is going to go from the top of the butt, around the thigh, and up the back of the butt. And that pulls it all together. Now if I do it with my right hand on this side, it'll be symmetrical, but it always feels weird. From the top of the butt, all the way around the thigh and up the back of the butt. I am not nearly as good at it this way. Feels very awkward. So people should notice how you're pointing your needles Mm -hmm. is affecting how I'm felting from the pieces the inside are sculpting or it really flattens that out gives you nice support against the felting surface to get that well felted don't, don't be holding it in the air felting no try to avoid that I was talking about the, the sort of the way I felt at my workshop on Saturday and um 
you know, some people felt by adding just little amounts of wool, you know, so maybe on this piece they would just kind of add a little amount and, and stab it in. Um, but the way I work with the with the bigger shapes, um, you really gotta you gotta stab in there, you know. Okay, let's get this belly secure. I probably could have done that first, but I I wanted the belly wrap if it went over this to include it. So I had that long 18 inch piece and I'm really just going around, going around all of this. So it's tight, but you've got to keep your, in this case you want to keep your ribbon wide because it's kind of like making a little girdle for everything. Oh, he needed that. Yeah, yeah, it's feeling a lot better now. And there's a little bit of sculpting here. Like, I'm really trying to dent that make that dent in his hip. Cows have that real strongly too, like that big hip bone sticking up. No one ever asked for a cow, my love, now that I think about it. A lot of people ignore the cow. <laughs> There's a proverb about that. <laughs> The cow that stands alone in the barnyard. Starting to look a little goaty. For sure. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Okie goaty. Goaty dokie. There's a, just a couple more little shapes. Um, I want a little soft pillow to give him a little more shoulder definition. So that's about a three inch, a quarter of a three inch piece. Maybe not quite so much. Let's do it. I'll do it on the, um, I'll do it on the Zoli tool. So I'm just going to go around the round end of the Zoli tool, maybe like three times. I'll make two of those. One, two, three. And these, they have a pretty strong shoulder. So I'm just gonna shape this into a shoulder, you know, pointing up towards his withers and then coming to meet his chest. So I've stretched the shape out a little bit. Um, some of these shapes are soft so that you can sculpt them into place. So that just gives them a little bit more kind of shoulder bulge right there. A man, of, a man accused of stealing a goat should not entertain his visitors with goat meat. Oh, there's some good ones. <laughs> a man accused of stealing a goat who entertains his visitors with goat meat is not very smart. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> like there needed to be a proverb yes. for that. <laughs> okay, we need a little more substance on the neck. And I also like to use a soft pillow for that. Actually, we can do the same, we can do the same shape. but I'm gonna stretch it out a good bit. And I just want to thick, widen, thicken the neck, but do it from underneath and also blend to the chest a little bit. I could use, can you reach that? Yes. So this is where the mini um, stab it comes in handy whenever you're, because you can rest their little head or body or neck or whatever 
over it. And plus it lifts it up a little closer to you, which is nice. So the goal with these shapes is to keep them blended. You know, you're not trying to create new problems for yourself in terms of seams and things like that. Okay, we're ready to wrap the horns. Let's do that while our swax is still hot. And I just want to get that very tip folded over. Pinch it closed as tight as you can. You could leave them pointy, I guess. Let's see if I can get them the same length here. It would help to rub a little bit of tacky wrap onto these, but that's okay. We're gonna. Would you like it? I can totally get it. Um, sure. It's in that. If you have um, a tacky wrap sticky bun, just rub some of that on there. If you don't, your wool will stick. Bunny butter is good for getting the tacky wrap off your hands, too. All right, we're going to use the clay. I had broken it, split it in half. There it is. Thank you. And I want to work with about like six inch strips. Um, very thin. So I'm going to go ahead and quarter this. And the horn is about that up and back, so getting that nice tapered. Tapered look. I love this color. Sorry, I'm probably not working in the center. You are now. <laughs> so when you come up towards the tip, again, you know, I'm traveling in this direction towards the left. And then... Once I'm here, I've got to turn around and go that way. And that really locks it down. And with the swax, if there's a tiny bit of white, it's okay. The swax will sort of like t tone it down. But I would rather get a nice tight pointy tip and have a little bit of white showing than like have some big slippery, you know, bunch of fiber. I just keep drafting. If there's a chunk or something in the way, I pull it off because any little imperfection in this horn is going to show because it's so tight and skinny. So this is like a very good practice, um, practice thing to do for wrapping. And then I need to do it again, but this time I'm going to really build up the base. Um, you know what we need to do? What's going to happen is we're actually going to do a little figure eight in off-white core down here. So actually the horns, once we get this shape built up, the horns are coming out more like here. Um, but I think it's good to get the horn wrapped before you do that because you can, you can really use the whole wire and get it nice and tight. If I were to build up the off-white base down here first, it would be hard for me to get this tight against all this wire. I'll just, I'll get this one going and then we'll go back. So if I go around a few times there, now that's nice and tight and I don't have to worry about it anymore. think of like goat stories that I have. One would think you would have goat stories. You had goats. Yeah. They are so fun. 
I wanted them to love me so much. <laughs> it took a while. We had some escapes. There was a time I had to leave the workshop and <laughs> go home and gather a goat out of the pricker bushes. I'll tell you what, you know when they're stuck. <laughs> they let you know. That sound does not sound like they're where are Happy. you or I'm hungry sound. Yeah. And what was interesting was I had two pygoras, two angoras, and two sheep. And they traveled in their pairs. It was really neat. Mm. So they all loved e liked each other, but they generally traveled in their pair. So the second half of the clay, this is the second two quarters, I'm going to do it again. But this time I'm really going to build up the base. And then when I go up, I'm going to turn around faster or a little lower. Really keeping my eye on the taper. So maybe about here I'm going to turn around. Try to keep it smooth. All right. This is very important. Okay, I'm ready. Don't make a goat your friend. What? If, if your skirt is made of plantation leaves or else it will strip you naked. <laughs> the goat's like, I don't care if we call ourselves friends. I want those plantation leaves. <laughs> What's a plantation leaf? I don't know. It's an African proverb. It's a good thing I'm not hungry for denim today, Kyla. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> I can't dive deeper into that proverb. Like, I, I'm not sure. Like deeper than the obvious. I'm not sure. <laughs> Some of them I just don't. Like, why? Why are you? Why did it have to be a saying? I think someone on the internet's just messing with us. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were a lot of them. You don't give someone a goat for a gift and still hold on to the rope. Oh. That's a, that's a good one. Oh, yeah, that is a really good one. See, that I get. You gotta just put it out there and let it go. Yeah, let go of the leash. That's right. Okay, now to make these perfect, I want to get this shape a little bit better. So I just have a little bit of piece left before I swax them. I want to make them just right. And like the way there was a little bump there. Now it's bumpless. So they're working on a roof out there, which may be problematic with the dogs liking to bark at. The tighter you can wrap and felt when you're using Swax, the better. The Swax doesn't like to try to shape to mushy wool. All right, before I Swax, I'm gonna get that white piece on the bottom I was talking about. So out of your core wool pile, you're looking for something about four or five inches long that's maybe about a quarter. And you want to figure eight around 
the base of the horns. Maybe like two times. I'm really trying to keep it down about like that. Around the whole thing. Their horns like really kind of come up as big bony things out of there, right behind there. Um, up off the back of their skull. So it would be good to look at um, look at a skeleton to see that. Alrighty, I think I'm ready for swax. That's really a process, those horns. Mm -hmm. How many minutes are we on? <laughs> Almost 15. Yeah. We don't have to show all of it, I guess. So this takes a little bit. This is a two coat process. So one is just going to kind of like sort of lay in there. The second one is is what's gonna get, then get the shine. So this is just kind of like filling the gaps, I guess. And I'll go ahead and do the second coat, um, so you can see the difference between the swaxed and the unswaxed horn. Come here. Sorry, he's in the way, but I gotta turn him a certain way to get each part. I'm getting my second coat a little more thorough. Okay. What's cool is with the swax too, you can really get that tip of the horn, like, pointy. So people are gonna struggle if they don't have some kind of uh, bunny butter. Um, uh, not struggle, but it's it's gonna wanna stick to your hands more. You need some yeah. kind of... Yeah, a little lotion or... Makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think that's just really cool looking. Kind of has that waxy, bony look. Okay, the next thing I want to do is finish off the legs, like kind of the way I want them to be. And you have options. Um, this little guy, I just did a darker knee and hock. Um, you could keep the whole leg white. Um, you could get a little darker towards the bottom. But let's build up what we need to with your, um, well, I guess it depends on what you want to do. Let's do it this way. Let's, with the oatmeal, we'll make his little knees dark. You're going to take about a four inch piece, three to four inches, and we're going to quarter it. So we're going to do the hocks and the knees. The knees probably won't need quite so much. The hocks will. So on the knee, it's halfway between the elbow and the pastern, you want to just do a tiny little crisscross. Like keep your, keep your ribbon like an eighth of an inch wide and if you do that tiny little crisscross, 
it'll make a nice little knot. And I used about half of my piece. And the knot represents their little joint. Just get it going and then I start my crisscross. I'm just kind of thinking to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. So the narrower you can keep the ribbon and the tighter you can keep it, the more it's going to look like a concentrated little bump than like a swollen, badly bruised <laughs> goat that's, that's not that got stuck in the for. fence. And then let's build up the upper leg a little bit and we're going to switch to Serafina white because that's going to be our, um, our top coat color. You basically want like nice thin sort of three or four inch strip. So I want to do a down and up thing. So I'm going down towards the knee and then turn around and go back up. Whatever you need to thicken up that top leg. And then on the bottom of the leg, I can either continue with the, um, with the oatmeal, I have a little bit of clay left, so maybe I'll do that. Instead of going white there, I'm going to take a tiny bit of oatmeal. I want to keep this leg really skinny, so I'm just doing this thinnest little glaze of oatmeal. And then I'm going to switch to clay, which is slightly darker, a little strip of that. You could do this in white. Um, and get this dark down near his foot. We had already made that joint bigger, so just be careful not to... Mine's looking a little chunky. Not a fan. It's alright, I'll get this one better. I'm stretching out a thin piece of oatmeal. I'm coming from the knee and wrapping it really thin. And then down on the foot here, as I get close to the foot, I'm going to switch to the clay and just get that covered. I think it's hard to cover that white is the problem. There we go, this one's better. I didn't do my other upper leg. My belly has four chambers. <laughs> it's got my first breakfast chamber, my second breakfast, lunch. Sometimes I have first dinner and second dinner. Oh, that, that would be five. Yeah, let me rethink this. I need five a or six. Chocolate chamber. Oh, yeah.
So to finish the hind legs, what we need is the hind leg wrap. I'm going to change my tactic. I'm going to do the hind leg wrap in the um, the hock in the clay and then go down to oatmeal on the foot. We'll see what happens. So to do the hock wrap, this is like I use it a, I use this a lot. I sort of exaggerate the bend and then I come around the top of the leg and then around the bottom of the leg crisscrossing in this joint and thinking about making a little triangle right here. Sorry for the bad angle. Let's do that again. On this side. I want to see a picture. Yeah, they have cute little, cute little hawks. I'm always a little better at this one. I get the angle sharper. Okay, and then I'm going to just put a thin bit of oatmeal down his leg just to blend that away. The mother of the big he goat has no horns. He goat? That's what it says. Uganda proverb. The mother of the big he goat has no horns. <laughs> what are they trying to say? I don't know. Female goats have horns. I don't know who the big he goat is. <laughs> I like this treatment better. So if I were you, I would do your front legs this way too. I do need one more wrap on the top of the hind leg with the Serafina white, just like we did the top of the front leg. So I'm going to start on the thigh, just come down towards the hock. Turn around, and go back up. That way when we put our top coat and pelt on, um, I'm not worried about up here, because that's gonna get pelt, then this is all nice and white. So I'm using about a four to five inch piece. Start on the thigh. Come down towards the hock. Turn around and go back up. That last proverb reminded me of the Cindy Lauper song. <laughs> She's like, isn't she like, he bop, you bop, and they bop. I don't, I don't <laughs> remember. Oh, what is that song? I don't know. I shouldn't sing anymore, that's for sure. Oh, I like the hind legs. Front legs, meh. Tiny bit of oatmeal just to blend this. Difference between sheep and goats according to Martinique. I, I, I don't even know how to read that, and I can kind of read. The sheep drinks, but it's the goat that gets drunk. <laughs> oh, that's funny. They are different. <laughs> They're like, 
donkeys and ponies or cats and dogs. Like there's just that little difference. So cats, donkeys, and goats being in the same boat. Dogs, horses, and sheep. That's my two cents anyway. That's the way I see it. Cats, donkeys, and goats? Cats, donkeys, and goats hmm. are like the more kind of aloof, mischievous, intelligent. Not that they're more intelligent, but they're like... Hmm. And then the horses, the dogs, and the sheep are all just like, yes, please, please. <laughs>